Amiodarone is effective for the treatment of both supraventricular and ventricular arrhythmias. Synchronized cardioversion is performed on patients that still have a pulse but are hemodynamically unstable. End-tidal CO2 monitoring is used to detect the presence of a misplaced endotracheal tube. The cumulative total dose of amiodarone should not exceed 2.2 grams in 24 hours. Clinicians should wait a minimum of 72 hours after return to normothermia before performing neuroprognostication. Amiodarone cannot be given via the endotracheal route. Symptomatic bradycardia should be treated with 1 mg of intravenous atropine when indicated. During CPR, end tidal CO2 values of at least more than 10 mm mercury and ideally more than 20 mm mercury are recommended. Lidocaine, epinephrine, atropine, naloxone, and vasopressin can be given via the endotracheal route. Magnesium sulfate is the first-line pharmacologic therapy in torsada de plant. NTG can lead to increased cerebral blood flow, which may be undesirable in patients with IICP. Amiodarone can cause pulmonary fibrosis and should be used with caution in patients with pre-existing lung disease. Amiodarone is generally avoided during pregnancy and breastfeeding due to potential risks to the fetus or infant. Amiodarone can lead to hypo or hyperthyroidism and should be avoided in patients with pre-existing thyroid dysfunction. Concurrent use of NTG and phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors can cause a severe hypotension. Adenosine dose for PSVT is 6 mg rapid IV push, followed by a second dose of 12 mg if needed. When using amiodaron to treat ventricular fibrillation or pulseless ventricular tachycardia, the first dose should be 300 mg IV push and the second dose is 150 mg IV push. The ACLS guidelines recommend head CT scan should be acquired within 25 minutes of arrival and interpreted within 45 minutes. Common opioids include heroin, morphine, codeine, methadone, hydrocodone, and oxycodone. Naloxone is the antidote used to reverse the potentially fatal effects of opioid overdose. The most common side effects of nitroglycerin are headache, hypotension, and syncope. Post-ROSC care include targeted temperature management, hemodynamic optimization, coronary reperfusion with PCI, glycemic control, seizure control, and neuroprognostication. The first step of BLS is to check for a response by tapping the patient's shoulder and asking loudly, are you okay? In patients with inferior STEMI, RV infarction is suggested by ST elevation in V1, ST depression in V2, and ST elevation in lead 3 greater than lead 2. The recommended rate of chest compressions during adult CPR is 100 to 120 per minute, and the recommended depth of chest compressions is 5 to 6 centimeters. Beck's triad indicate cardiac tamponade, the triad include hypotension, jugular venous distension, and muffled heart sounds.